So, the last thing I have to tell you young fellas is this. Play up and play the game. Honor your queen and country. Mind what your masters tell you. Say your prayers each night. Keep your minds and your bodies clean. Take a cold bath each day. And you'll find you can always look the world in the eye like an English gentleman. Yeah. Now, my lads, I'm just a simple soldier. Oh. Yes, I am, though. But I tell you, if you follow these rules, then when the last roll call comes, you'll be able to go up before the great headmaster with a clean British conscience and say, well, sir, I tried to do my duty. And I think, I think you'll find that's good enough for him. that we have rarely heard such an inspiring address. We are deeply indebted to Captain Flashman. Let it be an example to you boys, especially when you remember that only a few short years ago, Captain Flashman, whose name and fame has now run round the world as the hero of Kabul. I need not tell you of the dauntless heroism he displayed in Afghanistan of the matchless gallantry of his defense of Piper's Fort against overwhelming odds when he fought to the last against the heathen hordes. Here! Take the bloody thing! I don't want it! Take it! How he was found, the sole gallant survivor of that stricken field. There's a British officer there. With his country's flag, nay, his country's honor, clasped to his wounded body. He's alive. Get in there, brothers. Where your relief, sir. Nor need I remind you or embarrass his simple modesty by recalling the hero's welcome which his queen and his country gave this gallant English gentleman whom we at rugby school know as Harry Flashman. Uh, but, but even, even heroes must work. And we must not keep him from his arduous military duties which claim his first allegiance. <laughs> Oh, no, come on, you silly slut. Oh, hello, Freddie, doing all right? Oh, it's not Fred. Oh, Waiter. This game's as crooked as a line of Russian infantry, and a damn sight harder to beat.
will uh, play uh, that here, do you see? And every time I lose a trick, I'll give you a piece of my clothing, like uh, a glove or something. What if I lose a trick? Silly little gal. <laughs> You'll learn the rules as we get along. Boy, lads, now come on, quiet as you can. Oh. Anybody makes a noise, loses his pension. Right, up we go, lad. Oh. Go on, get in there. All right, all right. Sir. Right. Now hang on tight. Yes. Right, lads, start cranking. Can't stand height, Sergeant. Uh. Never mind that, then. Go on, up here. Uh. Now, uh. keep your eyes open. Uh. Now, what can you see? Nothing. Right, take him up a bit more. I don't want to go up any higher. Shut up. It's going all the way. Now, have a look in there. What can you see? Nothing. Take him right up the top. Damnation. Have you tarts been marking this deck? <coughs> hmm, I see what the trouble is. You're still too sober to play properly. Soon attend to that. Get him up, get him up, get him up. Uh, uh, no, it's no good, Sergeant. I can't see anything. Take me up. All right, all right, all right. We're we'll going the front door. Hey. Hey, wake up. Wake up. Look alive, damn your eyes. More bubbly. Hey. Shh. Shh. Police! <laughs> God save us. What the devil are you doing, sir? I'm hiding, ma'am. Well, I can see that. Who from? And in my carriage, if you please. Please, I mean no harm. It's the police. Oh, no, no, I'm not a criminal. I was in a club that was raided. Oh. Get out of this. Do you hear? Oh, please, sir. Hello! Explain. Oh, let him alone, Otto. Can't you see he's a gentleman? Quick, you booby, onto the seat. Such a delightful party. Huh? There I was, standing in a corner. Oh, yes. Surrounded by three <laughs> duchesses. And only two of them drunk. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Might you have seen a gentleman running? Yes, constable. This is your man. Will you arrest him, please? Oh, stop it, Otto. Really, sergeant, it's too bad. He's making game of you. This gentleman is with us. Yes, stop playing the fool, Otto. I'm tired. My leg hurts. I need a nice rub down. Um, just there. Oh, the anguish. Here, I know you. You're Captain Fleshman, be God. The hero of Afghanistan. My stole. The yeah. defender of Piper's fault. <laughs> well, here's a go. He is a criminal fugitive who invaded our coach without permission. I don't care if he invaded Buckingham Palace without permission. Yes. <laughs> You're not English, are you? I am a German officer, and I demand yes. that... Well, Captain Fleshman is a British officer, so you don't demand nothing. Just move along, please. Good night, sir. 
And you, May. <laughs> Good night. <clears throat> My dear, your face. <laughs> I am happy that you are amused to make a fool of me. The devil take you, then. How dare you insult a lady, you dirty foreigner. I shall remember you. Well, I shan't trouble to return the compliment. Oh, yes, you will. You will remember me. My name is Bismarck. Hmm. Hmm. These foreigners can't look an Englishman in the eye. Yeah, when you put me next to a beautiful woman, and one of two things is inevitable. She either surrenders or screams. Sometimes both. Lola. Sounds like a foreign bedroom with purple wallpaper. Lola what? Montes. Lola Monte. Ain't that a Dago name? You looks a bit Dago. Thank you. Why didn't you give me away to the Bobby? And have to spend the night with Otto Bismarck, who has nothing but ice and vinegar in his veins. My dear, I wouldn't have given you away if you'd been a murderer. Bismarck is going to be a great man someday. He told me so himself. I have a destiny to rule, says he. I told him, I have my ambitions too. And what might they be? To be a queen in the theater and to live as I please, love as I please, and never grow old. And if you're disappointed? Courage and shuffle the cards. Not a bad motto. Well, I tell you, I'm a far greater man than any Otto Bismarck. <laughs> Prove it. night in a Bow Street cell. You were bumping that little beauty. Well, damn your luck, Flashy. Only the brave deserve a fare. My backside's like a pincushion, a hairbrush. Now, now, finish him. Smash him. Why don't they hit each other? See what I mean? Gently, sweetheart. You're not in bed now, you know. <laughs> well, well. If it ain't Attila the Hun. Ah, Cud. Glad to see you again. Come to watch us English at play, what? A sporting contest, ladies and gentlemen. Very yes. sporting. And the fitting moment to introduce our guest of honor, a member of parliament, justice of the peace, many years ago, the heavyweight champion of all England. Ladies and gentlemen, will you drink to John Gully? John Gully. John Gully. You make much of this boxing, I see. No doubt it is interesting enough to see two of the lower orders slash each other with their fists. But surely, well-bred men despair of this, no? Well, Count, each country to its own game. 
I hear in Germany you fight duels just to get scars on your head. <laughs> the Schlager, the dueling saber, it gives a man honorable scars. Besides, it is for gentlemen. Dueling, you see, is a uh, soldierly skill. And if you excuse me, I see no skill in this. Perhaps you think boxing's easy. Do you fancy you could hold your own in a mill? Is that a challenge? <laughs> Good Lord, no. No, like you, I'm a man of the sword. But if you think that boxing ain't scientific, then you need a good teacher. And the best teacher in all the world is standing over there. He'd be glad to instruct you. That is a foolish proposition. You see, Mr. Gully is far too old. Oh, too old? No, hold on, mine, eh? It wouldn't be that he's a professional. One of the lower orders. I am not interested whether he's a professional or not. So you say. Oh, the devil, damn it, Flashman. Oh, I'm sick of his foreign airs, sneering at old Jack as though he weren't good enough. Point is, if the Count wants a friendly spa, Jack will oblige, won't you, Jack? Well, look here. I'll tell you what I'll do. To convince our visitor here that there's more in a noble art than meets the eye, I'll stand in front of him with my hands down and let him try to plant a few faces on me. Now, what do you say, mine heir? You mean you'll stand there and not run away and let me strike you? I'll let you try. Good. <clears throat> but damn it, he's a guest. You won't hurt him, Jack. Now, you must hit him fair, above the waist. Now, go easy, Jack, for God's sake. Now, Mr. Gully. Now, time. Well done, mine hair. Never mind, then. They couldn't have done better. Convinced now, Bismarck? Yeah. Yeah, there is skill, I admit. But I would be obliged if you would try me again, and this time you will strike me in return. No, no, enough, enough. No, no, Tom. This man's a sportsman. I'll spar easy with you, Count. You can go home and say you've fought the champion. Come on, squarehead! <laughs> <laughs> It's not fair when a man's not looking. So, you do not wish to continue, huh? Best not. Very well, if you've had enough. I quit to no man. <laughs> oh, you limey bastard! <laughs> the most useful instruction. Jolly game, boxing, ain't it? Great builder of character, they tells me. I have to thank you for this. Someday, Captain Flashman, since you are a man of the sword, I hope you come to Germany, where we Germans can show you how to fight with this saber. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Gully. And now, again, encore. Oh, Lord, no, not again, for heaven's sake. 
It's like making love under a coil of barbed wire. Yes. Again. On guard. Put that confounded thing down, damn you. I'm tired. No one. No one gets tired of me. Well, I do. You're, you're insatiable, you. I'm mistress in this house. It's my pleasure that counts. Call yourself a man. I never did. Empty, thank God. Do you get too tired of me, will you? I'll teach you to spurn me. I don't need any teaching. Find yourself some other idiot. May let some of the wind out of her. Madame Montez, as your legal advisor, I did warn you. Now, now you'll have to leave England at once. This is attempted murder. Very well. Captain, Captain Flashman. Who's here? Anybody here of the name of Captain Flashman? Hmm? Hello, whoever you are. Oh. Over here. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Captain Flashman. Hmm. I'll pull up a hip bath. What? Uh, no, thank you. I, I bathed last month. I take it, uh, Captain Flashman, that you... You haven't heard anything from Madame Lola Montez uh, since she had to leave the country so hurriedly after that most distressing affair. Hmm? Not a word, no. thank God. You see, she writes to me asking me uh, to find this uh, Captain Flashman and to provide him with, well, very generous expenses and, and requesting him to visit her in Bavaria. What the deuce is Lola doing in Bavaria? Well, uh, from all accounts, she's, uh, well, she's ruling the place. Mm, she is, in fact, the uncrowned queen of Bavaria. A more apt term would be, she is the mistress of Bavaria. Uh, you see, sir, when she left this country, Madame Montez travelled widely in Europe, appearing in uh, a uh, professional capacity. Her activities excited considerable attention among some very highly distinguished personages, including His Majesty King Ludwig of Bavaria. He was much taken by her performance, I'm told. I don't believe they are real. No, no, no. I meant the spiders. In short, he became her devoted slave, and she the virtual ruler of his kingdom. Uh, well, in here, she instructs me to pay you 500 pounds in gold. 
and she requests that you visit her in Munich in order to perform a very delicate service for her. Well, I'm damned, little Lola. <laughs> Munich. Herr Rietmeister Flashman, my privilege to welcome you to Bavaria. Freiherr Rudi von Starnberg, at your service. Useful weapon, this. Quite new. No doubt. In the British Army, of course. It ain't the weapon that counts. It is the man behind it. How very fortunate for the British Army. But we mustn't waste time. Lola can't abide to be kept waiting. You seem to know her pretty well. Well enough. For a messenger boy, I mean. Anything to oblige a lady. I have other duties. When I feel like them. Not a bad little cottage. I believe you're even handsomer than ever. And you are still the most beautiful girl in all the world. What's, uh... What's this very delicate service I'm to perform for you? Hmm? You'll see. <laughs> Baroness Bashman. How do you do? Overblown bag of blubber. Mm. Oh, my bloody foot! <laughs> Right, Miss Lola, let's go to bed, you and me. Come on, you and me. You're tired, Harry. You should lie down. I'm good when I'm tired. Let's make each other tired. Come on, Lola. I know you find me irresistible. <laughs> darling, darling Lola. I'm at me very, very best when I'm tight. Slut. Get away. What do you want? 
You great randy cow. Hey, no. colossal! Oh, 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 no. Oh. Ah! No woman ever did that to me. No. Mm. All right, then, since you're here. <laughs> Take your hat. That away from me. Ah! Oh, oh, that's for you. You're under arrest. What? For God's sake, that's not a crime. I demand to see the Countess. The British ambassador? Oh! Oh, all right. How dare you lay your hands on an Englishman, you cabbage-eating hounds! What am I supposed to have done, confound you? I don't know what you call it in English, but we have several names for it in German. Indecent assault, corruption of public morals, disorderly conduct. For your bestial behavior, you could go to prison for life. But there are more appropriate forms of punishment. Huh? Huh? No. Ah! 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 through the door. Well, I do like to make an entrance. You'll need this. It's a long way. But damn it, where are we going? Why the deuce must we come all this way? It ought to be safe by now. It's never safe with villains like those around here. Didn't I rescue you? Put your trust in me. Oh, very well, but I wish you'd tell me. What's that? Schoenhausen. Friends of mine. Ever read Frankenstein? Splendid stuff. Come on. You'll like it. Better than those seedy hotels where they don't air the beds. Oh, yes. 
now. You've met Kraftstein and de Gote before. Two members of the local friendly society, better known as the Brothers Grimm. Bastard. I'm sorry. I'm afraid my rescue was just a little comedy played out for your benefit. Rather artistic, though, don't you think? And it did get you here quietly. You kidnapped me! <laughs> Welcome to Schoenhausen, Mr. Flash. Please, sit down. There. You don't seem pleased to see me. But then why should you, hmm? There is a score to settle. I still have a tooth missing. But don't imagine that is why I had you brought to Germany. Amazing as it may seem, Mr. Flashman, I need you. Flashman, give him a brandy. He will need it. Tell me something, Mr. Flashman. In between your whoring and your drinking, have you taken any interest in politics? Hmm? Politics? Well, I'm a Tory. My governor was a Tory MP. Until they found him out. I am a politician. Someday I shall be the statesman responsible for uniting the present loose German states into a stronger Germany. Into a Reich. That is my destiny. One of these little German states I wish to see incorporated in this Reich is called Strakens. It's a small independent duchy ruled over by a young and popular duchess. Her name is Elma. In two weeks' time, she is to be married to a certain crown prince, Karl Magnus, of Oldenburg in Scandinavia. It is vitally important for political reasons, for my plans. This wedding should take place, you understand? By all means. Splendid. Good luck to the happy couple. There has been a serious complication. The Crown Prince, an admirable young man in many ways, has been foolish. He has contracted a social disease. A what? A social disease. You mean he's got a dose of clap? <laughs> well, that's damned inconsiderate of him. Huh? Still, boys will be boys. <laughs> will you hold your imbecile tongue? Fortunately, there are very few people who know about his condition. It will take several months to cure him. And this wedding must take place in two weeks. Oh, talk sense, man. I mean, it can't. Not if this prince fellow has Cupid's measles. It will take place, Mr. Flashman. It will. I scheduled. You see, this is Crown Prince Karl Magnus. No! Uh, no! Ah! Oh, you raving bloody lunatics! No! I see it all now. You want me to take his place? I won't do it! Bloody vandals. You've ruined me. We're making you stouter, too, like Carl Magnus. Filled with oil. So be careful when you strike a match, and on no account take your shirt off. Astounding. In effect, he is Carl Magnus. Except for two small details. What? The prince, as you see, has two dueling scars on each side of his face. Here. And here. Souvenirs of his dueling days when he was a student at Heidelberg. How do we give him those? Well, they must be permanent. Be quiet! You 
sniveling pig. I'm not going to kill you. A sip from the soup plate of honor will do you good. And remember, if it hurts at all, the pain has been paid for in advance by your amiable friend, John Gully. Well, I ain't gonna wear blinkers, damn ye. I salute you, you animal. Pish to you. Distance. Prepare. Stand still and only strike for the head. Fight! Halt! Faster, Mr. Flashman. Much faster. That was very good. And now we do it for real. Really? Real. We'll cut the other one with a rusty saw. Well, it ain't fair, damn you. My skull's fractured. Uh. Bastard! <laughs> what kind of a man are you, Mr. Flashman? An Englishman. An Englishman? Then hold him! Hold him! Excellent, hmm? Both to the inch, uh, stand up. Leave the wounds open so that he scars properly. Ah! I have a feeling our task will be easier. You are beginning to behave like royalty already. His Royal Highness, Prince Karl Ragnar Adolphus Magnus, Crown Prince of Oldenburg, great-great-grandson of George III, is a vigorous and athletic young man who walks with a military swagger, usually with his left hand in the small of his back. He has an aristocratic manner, especially to his social inferiors, and a peculiar nervous habit of tugging at the lobe of his right ear when he is puzzled or nervous. But he never claws at his buttocks. <clears throat> Royalty hardly ever do. He is extremely fond of German wine, but never drinks claret, which invariably makes him sick. He likes snuff, and is expert at opening his snuff box with one hand and taking a pinch. <laughs> <laughs> His Royal Highness is an enthusiastic player of billiards, pyramids and pool and is extremely expert at performing big shots for the entertainment of his friends. Excellent. He is also a skillful dancer and takes special delight in the new bohemian peasant dance, the polka, which he performs with the prettiest partners he can find.
Berlin, sir. Yourself? Uh. He begins to lose the part. Just in time, I feel. Hmm? He'll do. Oh, he'll do. Your education is over. From this moment on, you begin to play your part in earnest. Your life may depend on it. The Crown Prince is not you to enter Strakens until the day after tomorrow. You will spend tomorrow night on the borders of the Duchy in the Chateau at Tarlenheim. Prost. Strakens, Your Highness. I trust Your Highness, this journey was not too tedious. No. No, indeed. Though I must confess, I counted the hours all the way. Oh. Was the weather cold on your journey? At times. Sometimes it was quite warm. 
but nowhere as warm as it is here. Oh, your highness, it's too hot. Shall I order the windows open? Oh, Christ, no. No, I'm, I mean the warmth of your welcome. The people cheering. Ah, yes, the people. They are rather noisy. This is a passionate female. She'll be tearing my trousers off in a minute. Pay her a compliment, man. Say something gallant. Highness, may I say, may I tell you, you're the loveliest piece of tumble I've seen all year. I mean, your beauty, so, so pale, like mist in a cemetery. Highness, shall we dance? What are we going to do? We'll have to tell what we did before. <coughs> Turn back two people. The what? Turn what? back two people. Oh, oh, come on. Right. 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 Hmm. Right. 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 Ready? It was like dancing with a dead nun. Heaven help the real Carl Magnus. And on this historic day, we humbly invite your Royal Highness to inaugurate Strachan's first public locomotive, steam, railroad train, and carriages. Traveling at speeds in excess of 10 miles every hour. <laughs> Your Highness. Another bottle, Highness. Get him out of here. Another bottle. <laughs> Get another bottle. A crisis has arisen. Oh, it's all right. They'll find another bottle. A young Stockensian nobleman has arrived in the city today. His name is Eric Hansen. He's coming to your wedding tomorrow. So what? It just happens that this Hansen is the one man in the whole of Stockens that knows Karl Magnus intimately. He was brought up at the Oldenburg court and was the prince's playmate and companion. What? My God, he'll see our face! He'll start silent, will you? So there's no reason to suppose that he will not think you as a real prince. He will only meet you for a moment as a presentation afterwards. The vital thing is that you must pretend to recognize him oh. and see as little as possible. When he comes up to you, you will shake him by the hand and you will say, Eric, my old friend, where did you spring from? And then you will look delighted. What happens if he sees through me and starts shouting, that ain't the real print? What will you do then? I'll have done it. Long before then. Your Highness, we're ready for you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Excuse me. Thank you. Eric, where 
Where did you spread? It's open! <laughs> Get me a brandy, for God's sake. Edico confirmo matrimonium vestrum in nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Amen. His Excellency, the Ambassador from the Government of the Kingdom of Naples. The Right Honorable Cassius Clay, Ambassador from the Government of the United States of America. Count Otto von Bismarck Schönhausen. On behalf of the Berlin Parliament, greetings, Highness. Bismarck, did he say? Haven't you had the honor of being presented to me before somewhere? I think not, Highness. Ah, oh, well. These Central Europeans all look alike to me. His Excellency, the British Ambassador. Hansen. Mr. Eric Hansen. Eric, why did you spring? Eric, why did you spring? Spring! Where did you Eric from? Your Highness, dear Carl, old friend, I had to come to wish you joy, you and your beautiful Duchess. Beg your pardon, Highness. His Excellency, the French Ambassador. And now, the Royal Photograph. He knew I wasn't the real prince. Suppose he talks. No, he wasn't sure at first. Yeah. But he doesn't suspect anything now. Mm. Of that, I'm certain. God, I hope so. Oh. Anyway, we'll keep a close eye on Master Hansen. He is one of the Strakens Volsungs, dedicated to keeping the duchy out of Germany's clutches. They run a secret organization, prepared to fly to arms the moment that they feel that the freedom of their precious little country is threatened. You can guess what they'll do to you if they find out about you. Secret organization? But you didn't tell Don't me anything. Don't worry, Your Highness. It won't happen. You may as well lie back and enjoy your honeymoon until the real Karl Magnus is ready to take over. Come in. Pardon, Highness. The crown jewels. We have to place them in safekeeping again in the clock tower. Come along, Your Highness. We mustn't keep the Duchess waiting. I'm sure she's as eager to be on her honeymoon as you are.
Ama, little wife. There'll be no more singing downstairs. We'll have a chorus up here instead. I'm not going to hurt you. Just once more. Oh, oh, God, not again. Oh, yes. A little more chocolate, my darling. It's so cold and misty outside. We could stay indoors all day. Oh, must you go boar hunting so soon? After only a week together? I think you're growing bored with me already. <clears throat> this indigestion. Promise you won't be long. Will you think of me while slaughtering all those boars? Every moment. found the boars yet? Hmm? This is considered the finest view in Strakens. Hmm? It's called the Jotenschluck. The giant's cauldron. You don't say. Thank you. 
antes. possibly gain from that? Everything! Jackets would be in total confusion. Germany would then have an excuse to march in and take over the duchy. Ah! Hey, you can howl now. That lot of mercy you showed me. And I bet you didn't show any to the real Carl Magnus, huh? Where is he? He's alive! I swear it! Where? Jotenburg Castle. In a dungeon. He was to be killed also, after you. Murderous jackals, you. You don't deserve to live another minute. Uh, please, let me go. So I will. Down there. I'll feed a zane to Gote. <laughs> <laughs> Eating bastards! Go on, pull the rope tighter. We'll make him talk. They forced me to do it, I tell you. What well, about fiend Bismarck? He stops at nothing. Believe me, gentlemen. Oh, my fine young English friend. You say you're compelled to impersonate the Prince Karl Magnus and to marry our Duchess. This was a plot of the German Count Bismarck. Well, it's true, on my honor. They kidnapped me and my wife. My real wife, that is. And my little daughter. They swore they'd kill them if I didn't agree to do it. My own daughter, gentlemen. My little golden-haired Amelia. Will I ever see her again? <laughs> oh, he's lying. It can't be true. The thing's impossible. They cut scars on me. Forced me to wear a monocle. Now, look. Whether your story is true or false, you are a dead man, unless you tell us where the real Karl Magnus is. In a dungeon in Jotunberg. We must get him out of there before it's too late. But we don't attack. They cut his throat at the sound of the first shot. Ah. Uh, where a whole army is useless, two desperate men might succeed. Now, if they swam the lake, stole into the castle undetected, one of them could make his way to the dungeon to protect the prince, while the other could lure the drawbridge. Karl Magnus is my friend. I'll go. And who goes with you to die at the drawbridge? The 
Honestly, I'm a rotten swimmer. Silence! Either you die right in the wrong you've done or you hang. Agreed? Yes. Yes. So, we charge in and we'll have Carl Magnus out alive, God willing. And there'll be no survivors of that garrison. Here, here! As for you, you have nothing to lose but your life. Don't worry. I'll find your kidnapped wife and daughter. <laughs> Take comfort. That dear little golden-haired Amelia is always in my thoughts. How did you know that I wasn't Carl Magnus anyway? Saber scars on your head are in the wrong place. So much for Bismarck's clever planning, conceited ass. God help Germany when he's in charge. <laughs> we'll swim from here. What? Follow me! Oh. God, it's freezing! Well, go on! Go on! You miserable coward, or darn you myself! Swim this way, Crown Prince Flashy. Come along, there's a good chap. You don't want to catch cold, do you? Who's your dead friend? Please, please don't shoot. It's handsome. Serve him right. You're trembling, man. I'm cold, sir. Not as cold as he is. Come on, out with you. <laughs> you in God's name. I never looked like that. Allow me to make the introductions, Highness. Who is this man? What is he doing here? Until recently, he was Prince Karl Magnus. But in fact, Highness, he's an Englishman who has been kind enough to deputize for you during your holiday here. Your 
are trying to drive me mad. If you have a spark of decency, then for the love of heaven, tell me what you want! Yes, yes, yes. All in good time. Cheerful fellows, the old lords of Jottenburg. When they got tired of you, they just chained you to one of these. And... Down you went! It may console your highness to know that one of your friends is already waiting for you at the bottom of the lake. Hanson, his name was. Eric Hanson. What have you done to him? He went swimming when there was an R in the month. And now, with your highness's permission, we'll bid you good night. You! You with my face. Why don't you speak? Good night, your highness. You look after the original. I'll take care of the forgery. What are you going to do? Don't be nervous. If I'd wanted you dead, you'd have stopped twitching half an hour ago. No. You and I are going to try out a little scheme of mine. After you. Now, look. What if Kraftstein were to meet with a fatal accident tonight? Hmm? And the real prince went down the pipe into the lake. to prevent you and me slipping back to Strachan City and you resume your rightful place on the throne with your humble servant by your side. What a partnership. What the hell are you driving at? Don't you see, man? Who would know you weren't the real prince? Just you and me. You'd be the virtual ruler of the duchy. Do you know what its revenues amount to? Hmm? You're mad. Stick my neck into that again? I'd rather be alive and poor, thank you. Where's your spirit, play actor? Hmm? Oh, I see what it is. You don't trust me. Well, now that you come to mention but it... But of course we don't trust each other, that's the whole point. We're both rotten, but we both know it. All right? All right. But how do we get rid of Crashty? Spoken like an English gentleman. Let's drink to our partnership. Sneak away without saying goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Not quick enough, go it. It's not to go to this time, you know. <laughs> Ah! 
don't like cold steel, do we? Swordsmanship. Fight there! Well, I was very young in 1844! 
hand in experience. Now, you stupid bastards, throw it at him! Highness! No, I'm on your side! Ah! Birds with one stone. Au revoir, your highnesses. No! No! Against us, my dear. But don't worry. It's all right. Everything's all right. It's finished. Or well, nearly. Who was it? Who dared? Oh, well, it was, uh, was, uh, some chaps. But, uh, my darling, I've got to leave you again. Oh, leave me? Oh, you're so thin. Oh, and your hair. Oh, sunstroke. Mm -hmm. Darling, don't worry. It's nearly over. There's only one thing I've got to do that only I can do. My duty to you, to Sir Kent. Oh, Lord. Oh. Darling, you must stay here and do your duty as a duchess. Duchess. Oh, no, not this time. No! No! I must go. I must... Darling, I must leave you. I'll be back. I love you. My own prince. 
I love you. I really love her. I think. You know what? Lieutenant! There's been a threat to the Duchess's life. Take your soldiers, guard her apartment. Yes, of course, Highness, but our duty here, the crown jewels. Ah. Lieutenant, you're not married. No, Highness. Then perhaps you're a lover. Ah, <laughs> then you understand. Take good care of her for me, won't you? W with my life, Highness. that if you please. Joseph, no, no, no. You go to bed. Good night. But Highness, Good night, I'm Joseph. Good. Put it over there. So, Stark Ends is lost to us. Hmm? For the moment, with half Europe in the grip of revolution, that is no matter. And that English thief, it's not beyond our reach. Hmm. If I know him at all, he will run to the last place we'll think of looking for him. Away from England? Munich. Precisely. When you have disposed of him, you will report back to me, please. Oh. Already it is out of date. I go to redraw it. In German script. I have the feeling I should be busy for the next 30 years. Hmm? still in the palace? Are you the I need your help. Otto Bismarck's after me. For God's sake, I've got no money. We pop driver. It's all your fault. Lola, I love you, you selfish bitch. You're raving. Get out. Get down, my son. Ah, ah, oh.
Did you change your mind? Harry. Oh. Hello. Harry. I knew in spite of everything, you'd never desert me. How could I, my darling? Can you forgive me for what happened? Oh, that. You've had your share of bad luck, too. Ungrateful swine, these kings. I only wish I could help you. But I'm penniless, you see. I know. I can never resist other people's correspondence. Do join me. Dear Harry, my need is greater than yours. I trust we shall not meet again. And yet, dear worthless Harry, there will always be a place for you in the heart of Lola Montez. P.S. Courage? and shuffle the cards. <laughs> what a woman. You know, if I were a marrying man, she'd be the last female on God's earth for me. Oh, well. Goodbye. A little game I've invented. I think I'll call it Hungarian Roulette. Have a try. You see, old fellow, when I kill you, it'll be because I want to, and not because Otto Bismarck says so. You do see the difference. Oh, absolutely. What are you going to do? Go abroad, I think. Bismarck's such a damn bore. But then I suspect great men usually are. What about you? Hmm. That damn Lola has cleaned me out. Oh, well. I've still got the 500 quid she gave me to come to Germany. Well, it's better than nothing. Yes. And as I always say, if you've got money in the bank and a drink in the house, what more do you want? My turn, I think. Hell's bells, Rudy! Somebody could have been killed! Well, that is the point of the game. But I could have been killed. <laughs>